Hey all, welcome to the Slayer Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Ayer, owner of Slayer Duck Calls, a company founded on family heritage, unrivaled quality craftsmanship, and an uncontrollable obsession for hunting. Let's get to it. How's it going, Hayden? How's it going, Matt? Welcome to the Slayer Podcast. How's it going? Going great. I'm pretty good over here. How are you? Doing awesome. I'm even doing better. Our uh, our duck hunting season starts on the 9th, so um, hopefully I can get out this week and do a little scouting. We we hunt public land over here for the most part, so a lot of our time is spent scouting, trying to find the birds. Man, I'm, doing great. I'm jealous of that. <laughs> we got to <laughs> wait a few more months. Yeah, we have a long season here. It'll go to the 9th until I want to say the 28th, 26th or 28th of January, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is really long. Wow. Yeah, we have a lot of local birds that, that hang out around here. And then about November, middle of November, we get the northern birds that come down. And I'm pretty fired up. I'm going to North Dakota this year for, oh, about 10 days. I'm leaving probably on the 18th and be there until about the 28th. Heck, yeah. That sounds like that's going to be good. Yeah. So, well, yeah, why don't we do some introductions? We got uh, Matt Carey and Hayden Martin on the phone. So, uh, Hayden, you want to introduce yourself, who you are? and Yeah, uh, my name is Hayden Martin. I'm a uh, disabled outdoorsman. I uh, have been hunting with uh, my buddy Matt Carey for the past several years. And over the time, we've just been uh, trying to find new accommodations and new ways to get me out into the field and just to enjoy life together and have fun out in the wind, out with our dogs and just taking this hunting journey one step at a time. That's awesome. How about you, Matt? I, uh, I'm from Georgia originally, but I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I've, uh, didn't grow up hunting, started getting into that and was able to go on my first duck hunt down in Arkansas, which was just spoiling. Um, and so got into doing that and I've been doing it probably, probably for about five years or so now. And, uh, just absolutely love it. Changed, changed my life. I got into doing that and do other types of hunting now. Uh, and then along the way, picked up a camera and have been just kind of trying to capture these things that I, I never knew that I was missing and bring people into it and uh, inspire other people to try something that I didn't realize I was missing in my life. So I just found I I started doing the, the photo thing mainly because I wanted to keep hunting yeah. <laughs> and uh, keep shooting things that I couldn't shoot when the season was over. So that's kind of how it started for me, but I absolutely love it. All right, so you're in Tennessee. Hayden, where where are you uh, located? I'm in uh, middle of Georgia right now, but uh, I travel up to Tennessee and Missouri during hunting season. Got it. Okay. Is, it, is that where you guys typically hunt as Tennessee and Missouri? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that attracted us. A couple of things that we're very passionate about is, you know, preserving the sport of hunting and also conserving our wetlands for our wildlife. And so, we try to give back so we can try to preserve or conserve the, the wildlife habitat, but we also want to preserve the, the sport of hunting. And, uh, you know, I think getting all walks of life involved in it so they get their friends, family, kids involved in it is super important. Uh, we do some work around uh, Idaho here with Wounded Warriors and things of that nature to try to get them, you know, doing something that they're excited about. And uh, the fact, Hayden, that you're you're disabled and you're getting out there and doing it, I think is encouragement that you know anybody can get out there and, and try to give this this uh, sport a, a chance and see if they like it or not so yeah Matt you said it's it kind of changed your life how do you, you know explain that a little bit more yeah I mean so I I grew up doing you know skateboarding and playing guitar and doing music stuff and I've, I've been working in music for the last 10 years or so like that was kind of my focus but and I've always had probably 20 different hobbies <laughs> But when I found this, when I found hunting and specifically duck hunting, it's just, it's a, a different kind of fun to me. When I found that, it just really kind of consumed all of the other hobbies and kind of pushed them out of the way. And it was like, man, this is, if I'm going to focus on anything with my free time, this is, this is what I want to do with it. Even if I can only do it a couple months out of the year. Got it. Cool. And then Hayden, how about you? How did how did you get into it? What you know, what drives you to to get out there in cold mornings and look for ducks? I got into uh, duck hunting through uh, my buddy Ben, who's currently in Missouri. My service dog passed away back in 2015, and uh, I had before that I had went out Missouri with him to pick up his uh, hunting dog. And through through that time spent in Missouri, I was able to just see 
the dogs that were out there and the way they just worked and the way they were driven to to just retrieve the the, the marks and that uh, that that were pointed out to them and that was just something that blew my mind and from there I was able to get another one of the one of the dogs from the next litter I was able to get one and then I just started training from there with uh, my buddy Ben then uh, Matt just started doing hunting as well, uh, about a year or two after me and then he invited me up to Tennessee and we've just been uh, hunting ever since. Got it that's cool. Yeah, I think the dog is, for me, it's probably one of the bigger parts of, of duck hunting. I didn't even have to shoot if I could just go and work my dog and, and watch all that go down. I, it's a satisfying day for me. So that, that's awesome. Do you do any hunt tests or anything like that or just mainly hunt your dog? I haven't done any hunt tests. Uh, I've had a couple of people that wanted me to hunt test my dog, but I just I didn't really feel the need to. I was just like, I'm happy with where she's at, and yeah. I just want to run her and have a blast. Got it. Cool. Well, good. So, uh, yeah, tell me a little bit more about, you know, being, uh, you know, in your situation and going out hunting, like, you know, what are some of the challenges that you have, you know, when you, when you, when you get out there and maybe, you know, what, what, what message do you want, are you trying to give to those who, who might have some challenges physically or mentally, you know, what message are you trying to get out there for, for the folks? Because, you know, from the sounds of things, it's not easy for you to get out to the duck blind and, and hold a gun and shoot it and do all that. So, Absolutely. Pretty much uh, one of the bigger challenges, uh, okay, we mentioned just getting out to the duck blind, but I have uh, mobility problems due to my uh, FSHD, muscular dystrophy, which uh, if there's uneven ground, I might be slipping a lot. And, you know, in the dark, that's uh, a that's pretty, pretty good, not a, not a good thing to be uh, dealing with. So one of the ways that Matt and I figured out initially was uh, to hop in a kayak and uh, we kind of load me down with all the rest of the year and Matt pulls me out to where we're going to be hunting and then we get set up and situated from there. And, and even then though, sometimes the terrain is not uh, stable, it's not steady. And so just having another person there to help me out, help me get situated, that's kind of a must right now because if I if I were to slip and fall, I'm kind of a uh, SOL until someone uh, comes and gets me. That's just, that's one of the big things to hunting is also just having someone you can trust and rely on uh, that knows you and knows your situation. And if you're gonna uh, go out and hunt and have fun, make sure to surround yourself with the people that you trust and are are able to help you out. Yeah. Yeah, I could imagine that would be a, a huge thing. And, and it probably, you know, I'm just guessing because I, I don't know what it's like to be in your situation, but uh, you would probably really have to be comfortable with that person and trust them. Like if it was just anybody, you might not feel comfortable asking for help or uh, looking for a shoulder to lean on. You probably have to have a pretty good relationship with that person to feel comfortable to, to do those things. Or am I wrong? You just, if somebody's willing to help, you're good to go. I mean, if someone is willing to help, I'm all for it. But even then, though, it's just like, how do I know that this person can help me out if I'm hunting with them for the first time? And that is something that Matt and I have uh, built up over about the past seven, eight years that we've known each other is that we went to school together in uh, Tennessee. And that's how we started our, our friendship and the brotherhood that we have today. And now we're just, we, we're able to hunt together. We're talking we're talking how we're training our dogs together. We're talking the different the different guns that we're looking at. I mean, he and I we can talk hunting twenty four seven, three six five, <laughs> and uh, yeah. we sometimes we have to limit our phone calls because there have been <clears> times <throat> we've been talking to each other about hunting, and then we look at the time and we're like, have we really been talking for two hours? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I had a conversation with an elk hunter earlier this morning and. It was supposed to be a 30 minute phone call and it turned out to be about two hours and 15 minutes. And we wanted to talk about something very specific and it's about an hour and 45 minutes to get to that topic. We were talking about our elk hunts the last two weeks or whatever. So I know how that goes. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's the last time you guys been on? Uh, I, you guys had an early till season, didn't you? Yeah. Hayden came, actually came up here to visit with me. He said for me, how, how long were you there? Like four days, Hayden? Is that right? Other four or five days. 
Yeah, so he came up for like four or five days before it was. We have an early goose season, like a resident goose season, and then dove are also open at the same time. And it just kind of didn't work out the best to have him come up during uh, the September season because our buddy that has the boat wasn't only wasn't going to be there at all uh, for most of it. So it kind of makes it a little challenging to get to some of these spots, but. We went to, uh, we went and did like one day of goose hunting and did not, <laughs> we saw a lot of geese, but they didn't get anywhere close to where we were. And the, the early season local geese, they just do what they want to do. You yeah. can't, there's no calling them <laughs> to do anything otherwise. But then we had, we went out, I think that first afternoon and we're like, oh, let's go shoot some doves. And the first spot like wasn't going to work. So then we went to the, a second spot, which was kind of like a gas and it was, actually pretty successful that's good oh yeah we, yeah that was a fun night kind of got in a little trouble too but it was, it was fun <laughs> when you say a little bit of trouble you mean we we got home a little later than we were supposed to oh god it was fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah that happens when you're hunting yeah, yeah well we were trying to pack up and then all of a sudden everything starts flying you yeah. know and you yeah. you can't you can't walk away when they're just flying right over your head. <laughs> so. It's funny because I always use the hunt of a lifetime. You know, if I'm going to need an extra day or extra, you know, or if I need a week to get away or even if I'm going to be home late, I'm like, send a text message. Hey, it's a hunt of a lifetime. And then so now I've used it so much. She, my wife just cuts me off. She's like, I know it's a hunt of a lifetime. Just have fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so seems to come up a lot every year. Oh, cool. So, Matt, what, what do you, you, so you're doing photography. Do you sell your photography or are you just uh, out helping folks with content? How, what do you do with your photography? Yeah, I mean, so like I mentioned before, it, it really just started out of wanting to continue my hunting season. So it, it has been like a hobby for a while and, and mostly was just shooting uh, birds. I mean, I, I for probably like the first year that I was shooting photos, I only shot pictures of ducks and was like really trying to capture just learn how to use the camera but learn uh, how to capture birds in flight which is not the easiest way to learn how to use a camera (laughs) i don't recommend it if you're just trying to understand the settings and everything but but yeah so it it kind of morphed into that and then i then i I realized oh i could take pictures of other things besides ducks (laughs) and trying to capture the uh, just experience that I I had come to love over the last few years and, and then share that with people. You know, I, I started showing some of these photos I had taken to, to pe- showing them to my friends and people that don't really hunt. And they're like, Whoa, that's cool. I, I think I'd like to go duck hunting. That looks cool. I've, I've never seen a place quite like that in my whole life, you know, yeah. and just like, you know, so, uh, uh, some of the places that we get to go when we go and chase after these birds, it's just, it, you you would never ever see it you yeah. know if you if you weren't you know chasing ducks and so uh, it's just such a cool thing to be able to share with people so then after I realized that I was like well you know I just want to inspire other people to try to do this thing and so for the longest time it has been a hobby but over the last year I've been kind of focusing on okay it turns out like I, I'm actually maybe better at this than I had imagined I would be uh, and could maybe be more of a hobby and maybe also help me to do more of this thing I love so much closer to full time than just doing it in my free time. And, you know, most of the work that I have been doing outside of photography is freelance work. So I, I have a pretty flexible schedule to hunt a lot. I I get out, I would say, probably most mornings during the season. But, you know, being able to, like, connect with other people that love the sport and companies uh, like you guys that just you, you want to see the hunting community flourish and you want to see more people experience the sport and just kind of partnering with different people to, to do that. And, you know, I, I think every, everything that I've seen so far is like, I can, I have a unique perspective and on all, it seems like a lot of people who hunt, it is you know, something they've done their whole life or their dad taught them. And there's, there's not a lot of maybe late bloomers, which is kind of what we need to, yeah. to, to build up and then set up the next generation. Yeah. And so, 
so that's kind of been my goal with it all. I had, I, I wouldn't say I've like sold a, a ton of photos or, or made a lot of money doing it. It's something I, I want to do more and now pursuing a bit more, but I, I mainly like, I, you know, I'd be happy to make money off of it, but I, I like being able to inspire people and just do something different. You know, a lot of that I, uh, that I've noticed even in the hunting industry specifically with photos and creative things videos as well people are in this very niche thing that's like uh you know there's all all the other things going on but they're focusing on hunting to take photos and everybody's photos like look exactly the same and everybody's taking the same angles and trying to copy each other and so you know one of the things i also want to do is just inspire other creative people to just try something different you know because it's like it it's gonna obviously we're we've done something uh from a pr perspective that it it's not grow the industry's not really growing and the the community's not growing so something needs to change to inspire people whether it's the the way we communicate it to other people or uh the the photos and the way it's portrayed you know so like at I avoid the like pile pick type things. You know, I don't, I don't like posting things like that. You know, not, not that I don't think it's cool. I I think it's great to like be able to show people like, man, we harvested a lot and we're really grateful for this, this great day. And and as a memory, like I take, I take those photos personally for me and I keep them on my phone, but I don't post it uh, mainly just because I want to portray it in in a different light that probably the outsiders don't don't get to see you know i want them to see the beauty of it and the the cool factor over the the blood and the numbers of of harvest or however however you want to say it yeah one of my favorite times of of duck hunting is that half hour before shoot time you Mm -hmm. get all set up you get your decoy set up your dog's kind of sitting there shivering and on the verge of floating you know and and everybody's just kind of sitting quietly and, and you're hearing ducks land in your, your, your set. You're hearing the, the wings whistling above you. You're hearing mallards, you know, quacking in the distance, quacking nearby. There's such a sense of peace. There's such a sense of like being, um, what do I want to say? I almost want to say united with, you know, the, the wild or nature, right? Like you you feel very connected. Yeah. That's probably a better way of saying it. You just feel so connected to nature and, and God's creation. Right. And And you're sitting there and you're just listening to it all. And, and I, I try to capture it on my phone. I just sent uh, an audio clip to uh, Lisa, our um, graphic designer. I'm like, I don't know what you can do with this, but what, you know, I'm kind of maybe with you is, you know, I want to do something different. I, like, how do you capture that and then portray it to the hunting community? Because how many of us have sat there a half hour before shoot time listening to that, you know, complete science, silence and just like taking in that moment? And I, and I, I would love for people like you um, to be able to capture that and then give it back to those who don't hunt and those who do hunt and be able to be like, yes, that's what it's about, you know? And yeah. then watch the sun come up and then the different angles, it starts to hit your decoys and the, and the river or the lake and the trees and how it comes up. And like how many people, you know, wake up in the morning and watch the sun come up, you know, in nature. And it's such a cool experience and for me that's why i hunt i don't hunt to get a, a big pile of birds it's nice it's fun but that that doesn't uh, drive me so yeah for sure i mean those views I, I i always like to rate the sunrises and all it's like oh man like that was the best that was the best one of the season you know that's just some of those views are crazy i there was a there was a hunt i did it, it was i was solo and I had kayaked into this swampy kind of flooded timber area. And uh, I had invited my buddy to come with me, but he like backed out the night before. And so I paddle in there all alone. I get all set up and it's like what you're talking about. It got right, but, it, but nothing was happening before shooting time. I was like, Oh, this is one of those days where I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the, <laughs> the sights. And then all of a sudden, like, I mean, just like right after shooting light, it was just, so much going on and i mean if i had five guys there we probably would all shot our limit yeah but i like for the first five minutes i was so surprised at what was happening i just like sat there and i didn't shoot i was watching (laughs) and just so excited you know 
mallards just dropping in and fluttering like 10 feet in front of my face and they have no idea that I'm there. And you just kind of get this unique experience of, oh, this is what happens when I'm not here, you know? And that that's, that is the fun part too about the photos thing. It's like, since I don't disturb them or I try not to disturb them when I'm shooting photos, you know, I really get, I learn a lot about hunting and like how to, how to, you know, effectively hunt. But I, I learn a lot just watching the birds and get to see what they do when I'm not there bothering them and I don't have decoys set out and all of that stuff. It's just really, really cool to just see what they do. And yeah, that's awesome. I'm lucky enough to have a small pond in front of the house and uh, ducks come and go out of that. And as the, as the fall comes, I, I start to get more ducks and then some widgeon will come up, show up and then it freezes over and then they, they move on. But I'll sit on my porch and just watch them and listen to them and watch when birds fly over them, the noises they make, the sounds they make, the comeback calls, the hell, the hell calls, the greeting calls and the feeding. And it, uh-huh. it helped me as a hunter, just to sit back and watch and listen versus worrying about shooting and killing, you know, it's pretty cool. So Hayden, what's your favorite part of the hunt? You know, mine's probably that half hour before, you know, before shoot time and, and shoot time. What's your favorite part of, of the hunt? My favorite part of the hunt is just hanging out with, uh, everyone in the blind and just chit chatting because you can't really do that during a deer hunting and turkey hunting and I I have trouble hearing sometimes so just being able to just chat with one another sip on coffee sip on the energy drink eat enjoy the donuts whatever we're having and just building that brotherhood and that friendship up over over just watching the world wake up watching the birds fly in and watching the dogs getting ready to work it's just that time just enjoying the time with each other that's my favorite part yeah yeah we bring our nephew out and he's always on his cell phone out there and his dad's always like i'm gonna take that thing away from you you know we're, <laughs> we're duck hunting we're not looking at phones we're we're doing what you're talking about Hayden. we're creating a brotherhood and friendships that last forever and chit chat and give each other bad time for missing and all that good stuff but is there anything that you know you guys want to talk about as far as you know, if there's folks out there listening who, A, you know, feel like they can't do it, or B, maybe they're not even disabled, maybe they just don't have the confidence to go do it because they don't know about it. Anything that you guys would, would want to say to that audience? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say something from uh, kind of the other side of it, you know, being, being the person who's, you know, really helping Hayden and, and kind of figuring out the plans and all that and how this is all going to work. You know, I, I, I would say to anybody who's like not so sure, I would say just ask somebody for help. Like if you know somebody who who loves it and then, you know, is physically capable of, of helping you in whatever way you might need, depending on your situation, like just ask somebody for help. I've found like all of my hunting buddies, you know, we've had we had a hunt last year where Hayden came out and there was probably like six of us and every single guy that was there was willing to help. And, and asking him like how can I help you what do you need what can I do and at, at some point you know everybody did something to kind of help make it all come come together and happen and so I, I, I think that if you're unsure or you're waiting or you don't want to ask anybody for help I, I know that's kind of not the I think a lot of people's favorite thing when you know it's like you don't want to ask anybody for help because you already feel like or you could feel like you're maybe a burden to somebody and just, you know, you got to get past that and just ask somebody for help. And people are usually more willing to help, especially, I think, duck hunters are, are a different kind of people as well, I think, than maybe some of these other other folks. No offense to whoever you are. <laughs> but, um, you know, duck hunters are, are, are really just kind of a different breed. And, you know, kind of even the things you guys were talking about, about the... Um, the relationships formed and you can talk and you're, you're there for more than just a, a harvest. So I'd encourage that. And, you know, I just want to brag on Hayden too. I mean, he, he's trust me to do some like crazy stuff while I'm like carrying him somewhere or like tossing him up into a boat out of the water or dragging him in that kayak and that thing's tipping. And like, he's like, I can just hear him go, Whoa, Whoa. Yeah. When, <laughs> you, know, you, said kayak, the... when you said kayak, I'm like, well, man, you, you've got a lot of trust in this dude because yeah. I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm six, four, 250 pounds and I don't feel good in a kayak at all. I need something a little wider and more stable. 
Oh yeah, no, I don't. I'm not a fan of that kayak at all. But it, we found <laughs> out how that it works, and it gets me out to how we can do it. So it worked. And once you find something that works that can get you to from point A to point B, you found step. Uh, you found step one. Now you try to find something else that works, and you slowly start building in a contingency plan of a. Uh, well, if the kayak doesn't work, what does uh, how about how does piggyback and work, or um, how do you feel about doing how do you feel about lifting me this way in order to get into position to get me into the blind this way, or just it's just little maneuvering around that really make a difference in a in the hunts and whatnot. Because a lot of the times, people who people who might be disabled or have limited capabilities, they have a different kind of eyesight for the way the ground is or the blind is and someone who physically can because someone who has a limited capabilities they're just they're able to just see the way that someone's standing and the way their feet placement is in order to 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 move into the into the position to lift them into the boat, lift them into uh into the blind that the person who is doing the act can't. Got it. Cool. Do you uh shoot Hayden? I don't shoot ducks yet but i figured out over the past couple of years that i can shoot a 410 for turkey hunting and i can shoot a uh a two uh modified 223 for deer hunting and i also have a crossbow that i can shoot as well so that's another thing that disabled hunters might have a might have a problem doing just figuring out okay well how can i get involved in the sport if i can't shoot a, a weapon at the at the animal so it's all about trying to figure out what's going to work best for you for the animal you're shooting and sometimes that just involves taking the baby steps of okay we're going to start at the 28 gauge then we're going to work our way down to the 20 gauge then we're going to do the 12 gauge and so on and so forth until uh, you figure out what works best for you and I mean I know that that kind of goes hand in hand with the regular hunters as far as figuring out which uh which handgun works for you, which rifle works for you. But I know like people with uh, disabilities, sometimes they're just like, um, they're worried about certain ligaments tearing or things that uh, might be harmful them and to them in the long run. But just uh, figuring out the, the gun that's going to work uh, will just take a little bit longer. Very good. Well, I got to tell you, we're super happy to have you guys part of the Slayer family, your brotherhood, your commitment to the sport um, and to each other and to your buddies, to Hayden. You're an inspiration to us all getting out there. You know, sometimes I I don't feel like waking up in the morning because I got a little headache or, you know, I was out out elk hunting and my my, my, uh, ankle hurt a little bit. And I was like, I don't know if I should hike today, you know. So I think about you in those situations now that I know you and I'm like, well, Hayden could do it. I could do it, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. So you're an inspiration to us all. And I'm, I'm super happy that you're getting out there and working your dog and appreciate you having you on the, the podcast. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the family. All right, gentlemen. Thank you.